Since the earliest days of Victoria, education has played an essential part in the development of the community. Our early settlers established schools which, with the passage of time, reflected the changing fashions and wealth of the community. These schools were built to do no more than provide accommodation for the instruction of academic subjects. The three R's, reading, writing, arithmetic, formed the basis of 19th century education. Some geography and a little of the applied arts were also taught. Over the years, larger school buildings were built, but now, with a sharp rise in post-war population, schools are needed quickly. From 1945 to 1956, the state school population rose by 55%. For the reasons of haste as well as economy, a plan of a standard school of from four to eight classrooms was drawn up with provisions for extensions. Many types of prefabrication were used. This film will show the functional design and use of the most favoured type called light timber constructions. Teachers required a building that would assist the modern curriculum. No longer should a child remain in his seat at one desk. The modern educational method demands freedom of movement and activity on the part of the pupil. In this plan, rooms are spaced from each other and insulated against noise in order to permit activity periods. Notice the convenient corridor that allows movement from room to room. Low ceilings with soundproofing tiles help to reduce noise. Here there's room for the children to hang their coats on their own pegs. The administrative block is situated near the centre of the building. It includes the headmaster's office, which is a convenient and logical place to welcome parents and interview children. The staff rooms, which are bright and pleasant, make school more comfortable for the teachers. The toilet block is situated in a separate building, which is connected to the end of the school by a breezeway. In addition to the functional elements of the school, economy and speed of construction are important factors. In these light timber type construction, a wooden frame is erected from partly prefabricated sections. Timber battens are nailed to the frames. A rubber-like solution is applied to the edges of each tile, which is then placed in position. This gives the building a neat, serviceable facing that can be erected in a fraction of the time needed for brick construction. The foundations of this building were laid only ten weeks ago. Skillion roofs were arranged to provide a maximum area of window space. Sunlight enters rooms on the shaded side of the building through clerestory windows. Large glazed areas give a sense of freedom and space, as well as the essential natural light. The walls are brightly painted in contemporary colour schemes. The building is almost finished. Now let's visit the children at work in one of these new schools. A minimum of five acres is required for all new primary schools. Large paved areas are provided for assemblies. The sound broadcast system is connected to outdoor speakers which relay the music for marching. One of the outstanding features of the new schools is the large number of entrances located near the classrooms. The grades move quickly to their rooms with a minimum of noise. The children are always eager to be going into school for the classroom is no longer a place of dull routine. The infant department is making full use of the new facilities at their disposal. It has been realised that there are special requirements for the small child. No longer are they confined to desks. Tables and chairs made of light, strong material are provided. When it's time for rhythm period, the furniture can easily be stacked at the side of the room. The tables and chairs are so light that even the smallest children can help and this provides one opportunity for training the children to work together as a team. By lifting the bolts and folding back the partition, two classrooms are easily turned into one large assembly room. All sorts of materials, from polished lids to bottle tops, are used to manufacture the instruments of this percussion band. The children are discovering a sense of rhythm through music and dance. They interpret as they listen to the music, which tells them when to run, twirl and tumble like a clown.
The piano is an essential piece of infant room equipment and can be bought by the school from a grant which is given by the education department to each new school. Learning is pleasant when the playway method is used. In this adaptation of the game of Skittles, each child can list and add the total points gained. Who can thread the right number of cotton reels? Or pin the tail on the cat to score the highest number of points? Or match the right number picture to its name? The room is easily arranged to allow for a large playing area as the children work in groups on the many free activities the teacher has planned to introduce simple number facts to the children. The chalkboard is set at a convenient height, but it's no longer black. A green matte surface is more suitable for coloured chalks, and the slope reduces glare by reflecting the light upwards. The cupboards utilise the space below the chalkboard. Gay colours help in the organisation and give the room a bright, pleasant atmosphere. This ingeniously designed mobile library keeps the books in a clean and tidy display. It's easily rolled from its corner when story time comes to open a whole new world of wonder and enchantment. Each classroom has its own library. Now this grade three is typical. Ample space and intelligent arrangement of furniture is needed to allow the children to make full use of this facility, so essential in the modern curriculum. The children now use desks, but even these have been designed functionally and in varying sizes to suit the growing child. The children are encouraged to search for their own information under the careful guidance of their teacher. Let's move on to grade four. The wall board fixed at the rear of each room provides excellent space for the display of the children's work. It can also be used for ambitious projects like this, showing schools through the ages. Activities of this nature give the children an opportunity to express their ideas. Drawing about the subject helps them to understand and remember. While the lucky ones have their turn painting, the rest of the class illustrate the lesson in their own books. Display boards are also useful for exhibiting the teacher's charts. Their neat and attractive arrangement inspire the children in their own work. The puppet theater incorporates many activities. The puppets can be made in craft and the scripts written in English about a social studies topic and the performance linked with speech training. The whole activity adds to the children's confidence and enjoyment of learning. The same topic can be explored further with the use of visual aids. Film strips can be projected in the classrooms where a daylight screen is easily erected. Many schools are able to provide blackout materials for classrooms and so making the projection of motion pictures possible. The problem of ventilation in a blacked out room is easily overcome in these modern schools. Every room is air conditioned. In the winter, the air is warmed by thermostatically controlled oil furnaces the class has already been prepared for the film and the teacher merely has to remind them of the things to look for and then proceed with the screening. Grade 5 is listening to a social studies broadcast. Each room speaker is controlled from the amplifier located in the main office. Often the lessons are recorded on tape so that they can be used again when required. These children are recording their own play as part of a project. They are given confidence by expressing themselves and speaking before an audience. The tape recorder has the enormous advantage of being able to give an immediate replay of the children's voices. They can quickly hear their own efforts and, with careful encouragement by the teacher, correct any speech faults that they may have. There lived in a cottage a woman and her little girl who was called Little Red Riding Hood because she always wore a red cloak with a red hood to it. My dear, I want you to take some of these cakes I've just baked and a pet of back to your granny now she's not feeling... Grade six is the senior class in most primary schools. Preparation for secondary education is now underway. Some of these children may one day be our scientists and naturalists. In this lesson, they're watching a practical demonstration of tree planting, a part of their course in the study of nature.
the children note and illustrate what they've learnt. Later, when this plant has grown sufficiently, it can be transplanted into the school garden where it will be carefully tended by one of the children. Every boy and girl has a plant to care for. They take great pride in the trees and watch their gradual growth with the keenest interest. The grounds of our new primary school have also been planned with foresight. Large areas for gardens give the children an opportunity to enjoy creative outdoor activity and also provide the school with an attractive colourful setting. In this school, most of the trees are natives of Australia. There's room for physical education equipment. Everything is aimed at developing the children by activity methods. Large areas of land are available for free and organised games. Shelter sheds give protection during the winter months, as do the covered ways which connect the separate buildings to each other. So this is one type of modern state primary school. Throughout our state, their numbers are increasing. You will see them in the quickly developing areas of our outer suburbs or nestling in the scrub of a rapidly growing country district. For in the face of increasing numbers of children requiring state education, the Victorian Education Department is forging ahead with its ambitious school building program, keeping foremost in mind the school's functional demands and natural attractiveness. For we are determined that school will be a happy place, worthy of the citizens of tomorrow.